Hi, welcome to the Brick Filmers Guild podcast, hosted by us, the Four Monkeys. On this podcast, we had the extreme pleasure of chatting with Ben Young, also known as Sanjira. Ben is the creator of the groundbreaking brick film, Where Is My Dog Pico? and the winner of Brawl 2018 with Head Loose. I want to give an extra quick shout out to our wonderful Patreon supporters, Spugastu, Something's Awry Productions, Frame 5 Studios, Mind Game Studios, Dark Dragon Films, Forest Fire 101, Spencer Katz, Paganimation, William Osborne, Sam Futhy, and The Tenacious Brick. It really means so much to us that you want to support our podcast. We can't thank you enough. This podcast is sponsored by FX Home, the makers of HitFilm Pro, HitFilm Express, Emerge Pro, and more. HitFilm Express is a free video editing software with professional-grade VFX tools. It's a perfect fit for the average brick filmer's budget. HitFilm Pro is the top choice for video artists worldwide. In a single product, you get editing, compositing, titling, and 3D tools. HitFilm Pro is loaded with tons of professional features. Emerge Pro is a photo editing software that is powerful, easy to use, and a great replacement for what you are using now. Please head over to FX Home to find one of their products that will help you bring your brick films to life. This podcast is also sponsored by Mechabricks. Mechabricks is a platform and a community which provides all the necessary tools and knowledge for digital Lego building. All that's required is a modern browser and nothing else. Users can build, animate, make photorealistic renderings, and share their creations online. Mechabricks is also closely integrated with Blender, which is the well-known open-source 3D software. Mechabrick provides powerful and easy-to-use add-ons to import and animate 3D models in Blender in just one click. Other export formats are also available to import the models in your preferred 3D package. If you would like to help support our podcast, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter. Get podcasts at least a couple of weeks before anyone else, which are ad-free and intro and outro free, plus other perks only available to our Patreon supporters. So without further ado, here's our conversation with Ben. Good morning, Ben. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Uh, good, good to be here. A, a lo- long time listener, first time caller. So uh, good to hop on. Good to have nice. a good time here. You're you are last podcast of this year. Woo! That, that <laughs> ain't that a thing? I guess. Yeah, I guess that. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but yeah, only only two days left. I guess so. Unless you're thinking of getting somebody else in right quick, right at the end there. Oh, Definitely hope, hope not. <laughs> Hope I can end it on a good note. Hope I can end it on a good note. You definitely will. No, no doubt at all. Yeah. Um, so obviously we have to say, because this has been such a tough year for so many people, how have you been coping with all of the COVID and quarantines and all that? I, there, there's been ups and downs and, and downs and ups. Like I, I think at least for the start of it, like I had a, a really big project that I think kept me in good focus uh, my, my film Gooey Ghost, which just came out a, a couple, a, I think a week ago now. Hey, hey plug, plug, plug. But, yeah, but, um, we'll be talking about that for sure. I can't wait. Sick. Yeah. But like uh, ever, ever since then, it's just been kind of like sort of in and out, I guess. Like w- once I finally get a film going and I've definitely noticed sometimes it's just harder to really get that, that fire going and get, get that inspiration. But I, I think just like keeping busy and just like staying curious and stuff, I think has at least... It, in my good moments, been my antidote antidote for the weirdness, I guess. So things been have, going. Have, do you get to do? You, I don't know if you live with your family. If you get to, have you been able to visit them, or you guys keep in safe uh, distance? I, yeah, I I live about like forty minutes away. I work from home, and like they work from home as well. Like so, like when we can, and when like you know, it's been like a long enough time since we've been out in public. Like I I like I've gone and seen them like once or twice. Like you know, just in, in as safe as manner as possible. But like, yeah, you know, I, I do have a lot of family and stuff that live out of state, and you know, not being able to see them has been kind of difficult, I guess. But like, I don't know, we 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 trudge forward to get through the muck. We, mm-hmm. we yeah, fight. definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's the same with our son. He's about forty minutes away too, and so we haven't been able mm-hmm. to visit much because we even we like 
totally stay at home all the time. He does go out a little bit. So we just better to be yeah. safe than sorry. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like it's hard, but I, I think in, in like the, the long term, I think it's just like nice to be able to like look forward to the, 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 the bright, hopeful future where one day we can all freaking just mosh with each other as much as we want to once again. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, better to sacrifice, you know, a couple of visits than your life, you know, it's, yeah. it's worth the wait worth the way yeah yeah so definitely something to look forward to oh sure all right so wait you have a anniversary you've been uh with youtube for 10 years Almost oh yeah that's right I mean, yeah <laughs> i started in march yeah i started in march 2011 making minecraft let's plays that are now unlisted from my channel thank the lord above <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thank God I did that before anybody like really noticed those because those are embarrassing. But yeah, yeah, I started, yeah, holy crap, 10 years next year. Oof. <laughs> yeah, time flies, huh? Dude, it, it does, it does. Although that was pretty, I don't know, it was both a very short and a very long 10 years, I guess. So mm -hmm. it was, yeah, some, some of those real formative years where just so so much stuff happens. And yeah, wow, things have, have, have changed a lot. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I feel like I can like still like, look back at those like early films and I guess like see the, I guess the kernels of of what was to come I guess yeah that was that was that was some good stuff it's always cool to look at old things and see how you improved and mm -hmm. I, I like looking at you know I, I don't I always tell people don't ever you know delete your old videos yeah. it's really cool to see how far you've come well, exactly Minecraft ones for sure really yeah yeah, cool. yeah those ones I was like nobody really needs that but like I don't know like I, I keep Vimeo as like my portfolio of like oh this is my professional grade stuff but like my YouTube is like I don't know I, I feel like it's almost like a like a like a, a diary I guess or something like that you know it's a record of like you know where I was at the time and all of the weird like stuff I did so it, it's cool to like go back and look at my like I think it was called like the running to NES test where a, a minifigure runs to the NES and then falls over for some reason. That was the first thing I ever animated. Like, it's cool to like look at that and just be like, man, like, wow. Like, you know, came far. And I, I, I think, I hope at least someone looked at that and then looked at what I do now and is like, wow, like, you know, you can start here and then get over there. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. It's always helpful. I mean, it, it's helpful to everybody. Yeah. especially people just starting out though yeah exactly you you made a lot you made a bunch of uh, brick films in 2011 and 12 <laughs> yes i did yeah, yeah. So that, that was that was i guess you were a teenager then so you, that was mainly your one of your main hobbies i take it yeah you know, yeah like it, it took me a couple of years i guess to sort of get started i think i discovered brickfilms.com sometime like uh, 2007 or eight or something like that. And it was just that thing that everybody gets of like, oh, wow, I've got at least what I thought at the time was a lot of Lego. Like I can totally do this too. But then just, I think slowly finally working up the courage and just getting in that weird place in junior high where you're just trying to find like your place in the world. And so I finally just set out and just banged all these out, bang, 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 like one after another, like I get half of them were, I think most of them were actually done in a day, basically. Like, um, the good old so, day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're just like, oh, this is a full and complete like film <laughs> that I did in three hours. This is totally awesome and the best thing that I'll ever do. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. But most of your brick filming over the last probably seven, six or seven years have been brawl entries. Does that sound about right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think for me, and I, I've been trying to sort of get out of it, but one of the things that always kind of snagged me was just like, I guess writer's block and like not always feeling like I was like confident in the idea that I was like making, like I would make a script and then be like, ah, I don't know, or like make another one. Ah, I'm not, I'm not sure. And stuff like that. I think for me, the thing that really helps me and really drives me like as, as like a filmmaker is just like sort of feeling like the stakes of it, I guess. Like, you know, feeling like say with a brawl, like, or a fact, I got to get this, I got to bang this out in the week. You know, I need to get this stuff done. Or like with, with, um, with Goo Goo, it's like that was, you know, supposed to be my graduating thesis film. And then of course all that freaking exploded. But like, um, I, yeah, I think just for me, like, I really just got to feel like it can't just be like, ah, eh, when I get it done, when I get it done. Although I, I think I'm getting better at that. It, it needs to sort of, I guess, feel like, um, like it's gotta come out now. Like it, ne it needs to, like this, this film needs to like 
have a place in the world, I guess. And I, and I'm the one who needs to put it there, I guess. Wasn't that uh, Pico? That that was that was a bra that was going to be a bra entry, yeah. is that correct? But it yes. wasn't quite finished in time. Yeah. So the thing with that one, and that was that was a solid goof. It was uh, I made the classic mistake of um, like you know you, they announce the theme and then like I start banging out an idea and I spend a day writing it. I think yeah, because like they they announce it like Saturday evening, I spent all day Sunday, and then usually Monday is the day where I go and record all the audio and get that together, start building the sets. But I was just having this nagging feeling of like, man, like, this isn't quite right. And like, it was honestly, it felt like it might have been a little too close, like to head loose the previous, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the previous brawl film that I did, like, um, it's about these like, this dude who like, like turns all of the people that he loves like into jars of applesauce and there are all these people with like they're just like yeah they're just jars of applesauce with like little like lego faces like drawn on them and stuff like that but they can still talk and I, at a certain point i was like eh, i don't know it doesn't feel right to me so i went for a run and then watched this one like iranian film and for some reason i got the idea for pico and having it be this sort of like flat animated like multi-plane like sort of thing i guess and i just banged out the script bopped out the audio and was like yep yeah, this is it i want to do this the only thing with that was that yeah i i basically lost a day and really when i look at the timeline i i basically did get it done in seven days it was just moved one day over too far to get done in time for the contest so yeah like how, it happened how, how okay, far right. were you away how many days were you away from being you could have if it would have gone one more day you if i had started on sunday on on pico instead of monday it would have been done in time because i finished like what is it um brawl ended like 7 p.m like my time and i was like basically just like getting started editing and so i just went and went in the next day and i think i finished editing like five the next day but at that point i was like eh, it's too late to release it like I'll, I'll wait till one day like later so like it kind of brawled but like oh well you know that was my goof it would have done well it's a shame it wasn't uh able to be judged uh, uh yeah, yeah. yeah like it's a, it's a shame but i think for me it was like honestly just the the good response that it had and like you know a lot of like you know the 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 interest in it i think for me that was like reward enough like i i it really just sort of felt like it it like hit and it hit a lot of people like in a good way i wasn't really sure like how people are gonna feel about it because usually like when i finish up a film i'm like this is like the least funny thing i've ever done like you know and people are gonna be like what is this i don't I don't really know what this is. This isn't a Sanjiro <laughs> film. What? Like, so, like, but people just like really vibing with it and just like, I don't know, having a good time. I, I think for me, like that was like reward, I guess, enough. That that was really great. Did it get some love from like Newgrounds or something? Yes. Yeah, it was really fun. Like I think a week or something after it uploaded, I, I got a, a Twitter message from Phantom Arcade, one of the, the good guys over at Newgrounds, uh, and who, whose work I followed for a long while. So it was nuts to just see a notification from him. And he was like, hey, like, I, I love Pico. I think it would be nice, like, to really get it some love. Like, are you okay if we post uh, a clip from it on the official Newgrounds Twitter? And I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so, like, and, and so they did that. And then it just freaking popped off like on new grounds like i think it's got it has like i don't know like a thousand views on youtube which is dope i think it's got like five thousand on new grounds which is like who like wow. yeah like I, new grounds has been really great to me both on that one and then both like with gooey goats like it like you know it, i think it gets sometimes that reputation of being like the weird little like delinquent quarter of the internet where all of the the bad boy 13 year olds like go to make like the like hit George Bush on the head simulators and stuff like that. But like, it, especially like now, it just feels like a really nice, like, like decently knit like animation community where it's just a lot of people who just want to watch like a good animation or play like good, like flash games and stuff like that. And like, you know, people have a lot of good comments and stuff like that and so I, I i just find that a really nice place especially when like it's hard on platforms like youtube and stuff like that for animation to sort of get like its moment in the spotlight so i, I think it's a, a good little site well pico is definitely one of the main reasons that we thought it would be so cool 
um, yeah. talk to you for many reasons. And this yeah. may sound weird, but I actually think, and this is what I did. I watched the behind the scenes um, before I watched <laughs> the video, which I think ah. is incredibly helpful and makes it extra cool. Oh but yeah. Watching you behind the scenes though. I mean, you have a great personality. You're Aww. very comfortable on the camera. And I was like, okay, he's going to be fun to talk to. Um, but <laughs> no, knowing that, nice. but, but watching how you did this, I thought, wow, what an amazing alternative for people to do stop motion, that multi-plane thingy majiggy that you did. Yeah. I like mean, that, This was awesome. Yeah. I it, like the idea just kind of like came like to me, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired by just a lot of different animators from um, Yuri Nurstin. I don't know how to pronounce that, but he's the Russian guy who did Hedgehog in the Fog, which was like a legendary, like cut out multi-plane stop motion thing. And of course, like Joni Phillips, you know, she's one of the, just the, the pioneers of cartoony Lego animation, as they say on her, her Brick Films wiki page. Like a lot of the stuff she's been doing lately is, is that sort of multi-plane like cut out look with paper and stuff like that and so I just kind of thought like huh that would be kind of like fun to do and it would sort of like you know allow me to sort of go further in this weird sort of herky-jerky like goofy cartoony style I guess that I like to do like with a lot of my stuff and I, I always just like um whenever I'm making a new film and I think the thing that's the thing that's really sort of helped me with some of the stuff I've done this year I always just like to give myself like some sort of a new challenge I guess with each one like I feel like for me if you just kind of like I don't know if, if there isn't any like sort of new thing that you haven't really tackled before it's harder for me to sort of like be be like in, invested in it or be like yeah I want to see this through and see if this can happen I guess so that was like a really like it was a big jump, I guess, to be like, oh, hey, I'm going to figure this whole system out in like a week and pop this film out for Brawl. But like, yeah, I hopped over to Goodwill, found the biggest like um, picture frames that I could and just took the glass out of those, popped them on the books. Yeah, that whole sort of drill, I guess. And I was really like happy with how it like turned out. Like, I mean, obviously I could have gotten like better glass that wasn't as like reflective and crap like that but I don't know I just like like it just I it just almost felt like improv I guess just like figuring it out and making the rules for how this sort of animation works like as it goes I guess and I, that just felt really like invigorating to me like I, I wasn't honestly like sure what my future was like in brick filming at the end of college because I, you know, I graduated back in May you know got off doing that big big stop motion film and stuff like that but once I sort of found that it's like wow there's like so many different avenues I guess that haven't been explored like in this and like in other types of animation and stop motion I don't know that just feels really like cool to me to just kind of trailblaze just zoom and figure out where where I fall or where I can get up and stuff like that so I'm curious is it easier to use the multi-tiered glass thing than than regular stop motion because you don't have like the set bump issues and well, you do have set bump issues yeah like you have some although it's weird like because well. like what sometimes happens is like especially with sort of that setup you kind of like might bump one plane of the glass but it can almost be sometimes easy to just kind of eh, 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 just like nudge it like back into place i guess like in some ways i think it's easier and in some ways it's harder one of the things especially that i've encountered in like making my my newest film with the technique coming soon tba is like um trying to get sort of the perspective right it, it's kind of weird because like normally i guess when you're sort of building sets um like yeah i mean there's just sort of a way that you i guess build sets with lego and stuff like that but with with this you have to sort of like take into account like how far the different planes are from each other like whether or not you kind of want to adjust the angle of the floor if you have a floor to sort of like suggest a different kind of depth if that makes sense like you're just sort of work you're kind of almost just turning your brain on like 90 degrees and you kind of have to sort of like really kind of figure out like what you want to sort of put in the set because like the more stuff that you put there and like the more sort of tiers of glass you have just the more complicated it can be and the harder it is to sort of get your hands in there and really sort of move things 
Um, but at least with this film that I've been working on now, it's been fun kind of playing with um, having even more layers and having like, you know, a lot of stuff in the foreground and the characters in the middle, stuff in the background, all that kind of stuff. Like, I think, um, yeah, it's just, it, it, it's just, I don't know, it's just a playground and I love kind of figuring out. What's how many la how many layers are you using in your upcoming video? Uh, uh, it varies, but sometimes it'll be like like three or four, or something okay. like that. Like it, it's it's good, I guess, to not have like too many, especially like in front of the characters, just because like you get a bit of like sort of um, what is it distortion or like you can start to kind of the the characters kind of get a little fuzzier just because like you have that glass like in front of them, it's just going to eventually, I don't know, refraction, not refraction. Kind of like looking like, through water, too much water. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you kind of want to like, at least with the crappy Goodwill glass that I'm still yeah. using, like you want to, you want to temper that, but like still like some of the shots that I've done so far, I've been really like interested in and in, like how well it's worked. And this yeah. was inspired by like a, you know, legitimate real <laughs> animation type multi uh, layer. Um, oh uh, yeah. Like Disney. Disney used to use them. Yes, it? just like Disney used to do. Yeah, because that's basically how they would do animation back in like the 30s. It's like you animate on those little like transparent cells and then you put them on the sheets and stuff like that. And then what stop motion animators kind of did going past that, I don't think I really talked about it, but it's like you got there's that like paper cutout animation where it's like you almost have characters that have like a little armature. They're, they're kind of like almost as like little paper dolls with like little hinge joints. Um, sometimes but yeah basically they're manipulating those little pieces of paper like on the on the glass instead of like having animated cells already like basically they just like they didn't they couldn't just plop the cells down you got to actually animate and manipulate it and so I don't, it's, it's a lineage it's a line i guess and yeah i thought it would is, be fun is lighting pretty difficult to, to get right it's difficult? yeah it's a goof yeah it's, it's a goof because you almost sort of have to like um yeah basically turn that upside down and like i don't know sometimes glare i find can be like uh harder i guess just because like the light can sometimes be just hitting it at such weird like angles i guess sometimes i find like the the glare hits more on the minifigures faces i guess and you kind of just have to really get creative if you want something like you know spotlighting or like you know sort of more moody lighting i guess like that was one of the things i tried to do at least with pico to make things a little more simpler is to kind of just have a lot of it be relatively flat have it be kind of sort of a little bit darker inside of that one house i guess but like for a couple shots on here i've tried to at least make it a little little jazzy i guess so yeah. oh, i was just gonna say for those of you that um have seen pico or if you haven't seen pico yeah. watch the behind the scenes because oh, yeah. it's brilliant how you did it and then you really appreciate the final um end result by watching it knowing how you did it, it to me it was mind-blowing i just yeah. thought it was really amazing and did, did you shoot it upside down with your camera and then reverse it in dragon frame Oh yeah, yeah, cause that, and that's one weird thing sometimes yeah because like uh, technically at least with how like pico went yeah, it's essentially shooting upside down and then you flip it. Sometimes with this new film I'm working on, this is going to say this is going to be wacky cuz I'm talking about all these different directions, but sometimes it's better to actually flip it so that the characters are essentially like like facing away from you, I guess. So like depending on what you're doing and what set you have can sort of dictate what orientation you sort of set up the characters, like sometimes their feet are like facing away from you. I guess, and sometimes that can wiki because it can get wiggy because you're going and looking into the actual files, and sometimes depending on how your the camera is, it thinks it's in like portrait mode. I guess, and I'm okay, like that's that's fine, but like, yeah, it's it, it's a it's a very strange thing, just kind of making sure everything's all facing all right. I thought the writing on the faces with the marker was a really cool idea too. That was fun. I experimented with that because I, I didn't know I wanted to do the multiplane thing when I was gearing up for Brawl, but I did a couple of those tests with the little marker faces and that's so fun. I love just giving them expressions and just giving them like weird faces and stuff like that. I mean, I love a classic like Lego smile and stuff like that, but I look over I look over at like half of my Lego heads in there and I'm just like, man, all half of all these just have a freaking scowl on them or something like that i don't know at a certain point like I either love just the simplicity of some of the more classic or more just kind of uh what is it like some of the more simpler sets that like they have now like or i just want to freaking erase them and just just start 
from scratch, I guess. I yeah, it seems like really you have fun. more options of the, you know, of uh, emotions. I'm yeah. surprised that it actually erased as Is well that, as it did. Was that a dry erase marker? Or a yeah, it's like a, yeah, it's a dry erase marker. And then I have a little eraser and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it erases like pretty good. Like sometimes it can get weird and smudgy and stuff like that. Like, so sometimes like I have like several like completely erased Lego faces and I'll like swap a new one out because sometimes after being written on and erased and written on and erased again like a face will like it just won't take the the marker as well so you kind of almost just have to rest it okay. for a while so you swap it out with a different one but it, and i loved pico too i mean the yeah. dog was just so adorable <laughs> that first the very first shot of the film where the dog like jumps out of the house and does the bark and hops around and then hops away like that was the very first thing that i shot and so i was so scared because i was like i'm either gonna figure out right now this is gonna work or i'm gonna figure out oops i just wasted like three days of fat and, mm -hmm. or of brawl and i just wasted my time and so when it turned out well i was like ah Okay. All right. I can I can breathe a little bit, <laughs> just a little. Um, one thing uh, was interesting about uh, Pico was the aspect ratio you chose. Mm -hmm. uh, was that done for artistic reasons or or whatever? Uh, I, I'd say like both. I get well. I, <laughs> both is in several reasons. Like I I really um enjoy like that sort of narrow aspect ratio. Like there were two films that I watched in this past year. One was The Lighthouse by Robert Eggers uh, from last year. It had Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. And then the other one was uh, The Passion of Joan of Arc. It was, it's a film from 1928 uh, uh, by, by Carl uh, Theodor Dreyer. He's a, a, a Denmark, a Danish guy. And both of them, I don't know, just really like made me like, interested i guess in using that sort of narrow like aspect ratio like it frames up faces and like close-ups like really like well and so i use that for my film gooey goats and i just found that both uh very kind of like just interesting because i don't see it that much but also like economical because it's literally like you cut off the ends of the frame you, there's less like you have to sort of design so it's a lot easier to sort of like fill things out and kind of make the shot feel like full i guess um with pico i i think i mentioned it in the behind the scenes but it's like um a lot of times with the setup that i had before where there was all those books um where the the glass planes were stacked up on the books would still cast a shadow like they would cast little shadows on the edge of the frame like there wasn't really anything i could do with that with the sort of setup I had uh, at that time. So by narrowing it down, I could basically just excise those outside shadows from the frame and just kind of make it easier to set things up. Um, now I've upgraded my setup. I'm, I'm really excited to make the behind the scenes for this new video. It's basically like one of those sort of multi-tiered like shelves that you get at like Home Depot or Lowe's where you can kind of like, um, it's got those little holes on the end where you can kind of adjust how high you want the shelves and stuff like that. So um, with that, because the sides are open, it's a lot easier to get the light in from the edges so you don't have as many, as many problems with those shadows and stuff like that. But I still have kept that sort of narrow aspect ratio because it kind of just feels like a thing. And I, don't, I, just, I just really like working in that little, in that little box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so, cool. yeah, let's go on to um, my other favorite, which is gooey goats. Yo. Yeah. So no, awesome. but it's, it's, awesome. it's it have to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, and I thought it had a very um uh ah, Wallace and Gromit feel to yeah, it. Yeah, that was a big inspiration like uh when I was sort of starting it out. I think it was um Grand Day Out, whichever was the first one. I think it's Grand Day Out. Um, the one where they go to the moon and like to cheese and stuff like that. Like that was a, a inspiration, I guess, as I was kind of like pulling together the sets and really just kind of like pulling in the look. Also, like you know, a little bit of Coraline, a little bit of a town called Panic, and a little bit of other miscellaneous live action films and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know. I just really like. I, I, I was I knew I needed to make a thesis film and stuff like that. And I was like, man, I just really want to make a big, weird, like, like stop motion epic. And I had this script that I originally wrote for live action about a family that's taken over by parasites or whatever. And it's some weird, like, genetic thing. I don't even know what what I was thinking with that. But somebody was like, hey, this is kind of like an animated movie. And then I was like, huh, OK, I, yeah, I see that. I'm going to do that. And then I was thinking like, ah, how, what do I do with this? What, are, what, like, how do I make this cool? 
And I was like, oh, there's goo coming out of their mouths because of the parasites. Goats, gooey goats. <laughs> there we go. And sometimes you just come up with stuff like that, I guess. But yeah, that's, yeah. that's the thing. Huge, huge wow factor on that. There were so many oh. cool effects. Um, I love the sweat in the beginning that was coming down. Oh, I love the animals. They're just they're all so cute anyway. The boiling oh. food on the stove, the facial expressions, oh, um, wow. eyes and blink movements. I mean, just um, oh, and the voicing. Oh my God, the voicing was amazing. Yeah, I got two great a- two great actors: Dana Bixler, Christopher Rowley, Bada Bing. Like so. So good. This is my very first time actually doing like a legit like like casting call like audition thing and stuff like that. And like both of them just like came in. Like Dana Bixler is like a, a, a an upperclassman from my school, so she was great. I knew her before, but like Christopher came in, he auditioned and just bada binged it. And I was like, man, yeah, that's 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 the dad right there. I, I like that. But there's there's a lot of firsts with that movie, and it was it was really crazy trying to figure that whole out but like i'm so glad i'm so glad that it came out like it did and did you use a 3d printer for yes the- yeah a couple years ago yeah my dad bought a 3d uh printer because he's just really into that kind of stuff and just like and and so i knew like yeah like a lot of people do like you know those 3d printed like faces and stuff like that and so after i'd learned maya and stuff i just i i whipped those things up uh you print them out you put a little piece of steel wire in the back because you want something that's like magnetic enough that it can hold on to a rare earth magnet that's like embedded in the character's heads, but like not so like, um, not so magnetic that it's going to like stick on so hard that you're going to like mess up the character's position when you're pulling it off, I guess. So I I, I learned that from this one stop motion book that I got. I think it's called, uh, oh, I have it right here. It's a, like if people want a great book that teaches a lot of stuff about stop motion, I think a lot of it would be applicable to brick filming. Look up Stop Motion Filmmaking by Christopher Walsh. It was really great. It has like a whole thing on doing the 3D printed faces. It's got like, I, don't listen to that one section on building armatures where it's like a big aluminum block because that is really difficult. Right. <laughs> but maybe do like wire armatures. That's a lot easier. But like everything else in its whole thing about like production planning and doing a shot list and getting all this, blah, 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 like it's, it was, it's a really great resource of just the whole overview of like making, making a big old stop motion film. Highly recommended. But. Did you take uh, any like animation or stop motion courses at, at the college? So at my school, when I first got there as a freshman, uh, I went to Rice State University in Dayton. They announced that they were, um, as part of the sort of expansion of the film program, like they just got a big endorsement from Tom Hanks. Like the, the, they had a new building that's like, the, it's the Tom Hanks Center for Motion Pictures and stuff like that. And it was supposed to be a big sort of expansion of the program. They brought in like a dedicated animation teacher and like made it a new track so you could choose either you wanted to be in the live action filmmaking track or the animation track and stuff like that. So um, if for me, when I first went to film school, I actually wasn't sure if I wanted to sort of do the animation thing like as my thing, I guess. But once I got to sophomore year and it was time to sort of choose, I guess, I, I just sort of looked at myself and I was like, man, like, you know, I, you know, I have some ideas, like, I guess for live action, but like, I just really like think, I guess, in animation. I don't know. It just really, it just feels like where I'm at home, I guess. Like, you know, I, I at some point thought I was going to, I guess, sort of maybe do mostly live action and some animation on the side, but I just, I just felt like, yeah, I needed to do this. So I went and I was one of like the three people who went into the animation track. And um, so we had some great animation classes, like, you know, in school and stuff like that. It was a combination of like those uh, with my great teacher, uh, Lindsay Martin, and just a lot of self-taught animation. Cause we, we did 3D animation and like 2D, but we didn't do stop motion. That was mostly just me kind of teaching myself, I guess. So um, yeah, that was, that, that was, I guess the way, but uh, you got to sort of decide how you wanted to do your thesis. And so I was like, yeah, I'm doing the stop motion thing. And uh, two years later, here we are, <laughs> I guess. So yeah. Yeah. Well, Gooey Goats was very, professional i was really blown yeah. away. it was well the, really the thing 
the thing that's really been nice to me, and I'm, as soon as I say this, someone's going to pop it. Like someone's going to post it. But like, I have not gotten a, a single comment on that video that's going like, yeah, this is all right. But like, when's your next brick film? Like, because <laughs> every time almost any brick filmer does like a thing that isn't like Lego, you're going to at least get that one person who says it. And it's always just kind of like, a, yeah, like I love Lego. I want to do a lot of stuff, but I love Lego. But like the fact that I haven't gotten that yet is like, wow, like, okay. Like I feel pretty good about that, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Besides just the general, like nice reception of it. I, like that, that is my one little small victory I'll take. Cause every time I've done it before, I've gotten that, but not this time. That's you're, you're welcome to keep feeding us a blend of us, uh, uh, brick films and non brick films. Stop motion. Hey, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh, for me, like I I'm good for goofy, weird or scary or, or funny animation for the while. I, I feel like that's my thing. I'm, I'm definitely, I love, and especially like, as I proved myself with Pico, I love blending styles and different like types of it. I think that's what like keeps me fresh. And I think just keeps it fresh. So good, good to hear. I shall, I shall. And you clearly have an amazing, wild imagination. Uh, <laughs> I guess so. It's a good thing because yeah, you know, yeah. a lot of people are like, well, where do you get ideas for, you know, um, you know, bird films or where can I get a story? And it's like, well, you either have an imagination or you just have to try to, you know, get inspired by watching other things but it's like how do you answer that it's like you either have it or you don't yeah and it's like I, I think just some people and I think for me it took a while to sort of get there I think sometimes like the, the, the most valuable thing that I think I found like as I was sort of finding myself and I'm still finding myself but like um uh, I, I was in this one high school acting class and, and it was like one of those like beginner acting classes where it's a mixture of people who kind of want to get into acting and people who kind of want to get less shy and stuff like that. The thing that I think really helped me in that class was like having some like e experience with just committing to the bit, I guess, where like you're not like self-conscious about it and you're not like you're trying to at least like, you know, not really think as much about like, you know, oh, is this good or is this bad? And I still struggle with that. But like, just sort of being like, I'm doing this or like, you know, okay, what can I do? Like, I don't know, just sometimes kind of just going with the flow and just kind of seeing what comes to you, I think has been very helpful to me. I think the other thing for me is, and it's a thing that I always like to tell people, but it's like, watch like widely and just sort of experience a lot of like art. I think a lot of brick filmers, and it's fine, I think when you're starting out, because that's what you're in there for. But like, um, if you're just like watching like other brick films, if you really want to like get great with it, I think you need to like be watching like so much more like other animation, but other also just like a lot of films and like not just like, I don't know, like all the, you know, like, you know, American films that everybody watches and stuff like that, they're great. But like, there's so many, there's so much cool stuff out in the world that like nobody has like, you know, really seen all that much. And it's really like inspirational, I guess. Like one of my big inspirations for um, uh, for for Gooey Goats, especially with the whole parasite and stuff like that, it was this one film by this guy Len Lai. He's a very problematic individual, but he made this one movie back in the twenties about this weird freaking like amoeba or something like that. It's like this animated film, and it's like it's all blobulating and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, like yeah, yeah, like okay, yeah, like that was one of the, the ways where I sort of got that from. But like, I don't know, you just don't you get you get so many different ideas when you're pulling from so many different fountains and stuff like that. I just like. I, I just love finding new things and like finding ways to just combine stuff in so thoroughly that you don't even like see where it's come from, I guess. That's awesome. Yeah. But yep. still you got the imagination. So even if <laughs> I get I, I, yeah. other things, you got your own imagination. So you're covered yeah. both ways. T t tell me that when I'm just like, Oh man, I don't think I have any new ideas. I think I've basically exhausted everything and I, I should just go work in a coal mine or something like that. <laughs> you get, you still get that sometimes, I guess, but I know, sometimes you just got to, go with the flow and just like find find something new to inspire you or find some new challenge i guess yeah or wash some clothes yeah. see where i'm going there <laughs> so oh. you dabbled in uh, some live action uh, yeah. <laughs> wow i was not expecting that but yes yeah wow that's why yeah there we go wow yeah um, so this is what you made. What you made backwash back when 2017? Is that another college yes. project? Yeah, that was that was. Uh, it was for our sophomore, like intermediate filmmaking class, and so it was like this whole thing where you. It was almost like 
Thack, but you had two weeks instead of three weeks. I don't know how many hours that, not Thack, no, Brawl, but you have two weeks. So it was like, you had to bang out a script and um, like, yeah, like that was, that's the one time where I just felt like, I don't even know entirely where the idea came from. I think I just watched some random like shorts where there was something about water and I was like, water, uh, laundry, laundry machine, ah, time travel. Okay. Yeah. Like and that one, I, I'm like, oh, there's a lot of live action things and there were actually, I think there was one that I had on my channel and then I deleted cause it was, it's really cringe. And it, uh, <laughs> but, but like this, that one is one where I'm like, yeah, like, I don't know. I just, I, I felt like I really could like, see myself like in that one and sort of see like it, it feels like it connects with my brick films in a, in a way some people have told me it's like a trilogy with like how to shower and like the bathtub challenge it's like my like appliance series or something like that like where you got your That's bathtub cool you got your shower it has well, cool lighting yeah that was that was really fun like just kind of like we we me and and my cinematographer uh, abigail johnson great great artist like we went into walmart got a bunch of all those colored light bulbs and stuff like that i got like this big stack of gels from the equipment room and just kind of like just, just sort of throwing that together and like um and and then the the luck of uh, getting a, a a gopro so that I could jump in my apartment complex's freaking hot tub in, in the like rec, rec room and just uh, have them spin around in the water. Oh, I was gonna ask how you did that because I was like, wow, what in the world? I had no I, idea. It made me so happy that people were like, ha, ha, how is that? Yeah, like, and so yeah, it was literally just like, I had a GoPro, uh, it wasn't one of the fancy ones where you had like a monitor on the back so you could like see what you were doing. So like, I, I just had her sitting off to the side with the, the app where it like transfers it over, I guess. Um, but you couldn't like, so I, she could like, so that she could monitor what we were shooting. But once you go underwater, the connection just erases itself. So you just kind of had to like, okay, jump in the water, like spin around like a whole bunch. And then we'll come up to the surface and, and we'll hope and we'll see if it looks good. Like, so, and that was really, yeah, I, I was, I was super happy with how that like turned out. Cause that was one thing I was wondering with the script is like, how is this going to look good? But like, once you put it into premiere and kind of like crush um uh some of the darker or like like you could kind of see the edge of the pool but like it as once you just sort of crushed down the colors and made it like darker it it's a lot harder to see it looks a little bit more like kind of a void i guess and so yeah, that was that was that was really fun that was a really fun well, thing nobody would have seen that had you not just mentioned it because <laughs> hey, it really I, did look like they were in a washing machine it was really, I'll, really and cool. hey I love, and it's like you said, sometimes it's nice to like, I, I love sometimes seeing the behind the scenes before I see the film, depending on like which one it is. Sometimes like I, you know, if it feels like a movie that I'm going to spoil myself a lot with it, like I won't, but for stuff like, I don't know, Leica or Armin films and stuff like that, like I love hyping myself up, or I guess just animation in general. I love hyping myself up, like seeing like the techniques that they did. And like, you know, how do they, you know, how they do it. And so while you're watching, you're like, oh yeah, that's how they did that. Like it's, it's, it's fun. And then seeing the other stuff, like, and trying to guess how they did that as well. Like, I don't know, that's just, that's fun, I guess. I like sharing the, the secrets sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and because we're short on time today, sadly, we definitely want to get in um, Brick Flicks. Yeah, yeah. That, oh, was wow. it when we were there? No, I think the year uh, after you went. No, that was the year 13. later. That was the year later. Yeah, because I, you oh. were there. You made that one documentary about, and I was like, wow, Brickflix, oh, that's cool. And they got like a thing and there's other brick filmers there. Like, wow, okay. Like, yeah. And so, and me and my mom, uh, we hopped in, hopped in the car. We drove like eight hours from Cincinnati down to, was it Durham, North Carolina? North yeah. Carolina, yeah. Yeah. Which was a, a, a crazy road trip. We get, went through a lot of the like big old mountain, misty mountains of Appalachia and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it it was really like cool, man. That was that was a long time ago. So what was it like Aquamore? Thirteen, right? Yeah, um, and then yeah, Squid Squid was there too. David Fagano, like it was a it was a big old big old meeting of of the minds, I guess. Although, man, that that picture of me <laughs> where I've got the website, yeah, that's your you, shirt, right? That's my For what? 
The purple Dig Dug shirt, that's you? Uh, yep, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I remember right before that, I, I, we just gotten back from like the zoo and I went and I was like, okay, I got to do myself up so that I look good. And so <laughs> I, like, I like took a shower and I like combed my hair and I looked in the mirror and I was like, I look good. And, <laughs> and I went downstairs and then like five years later, I see that and I'm like, oh my God, I'm in a Dig Dug shirt that's like two sizes too big. I'm in my bright blue shorts i don't even know what freaking shoes i'm wearing i got my goofy haircut i'm like yep that was me that was me sophomore year of of, of high school yep that's a, a perfect time capsule <laughs> that's awesome yeah. no i love it purple's my favorite color i love it's, a, I it's a great it's color yeah it's a great color yeah I, I love it. I'm, I'm not as much of a, of a graphic tee type. Well, okay. I don't like shirts that have big, bold, uh, bold letters, but I, I got this one shirt on right now. It's that citizen of the year shirt that, that a spastic chihuahua oh, made. Cool. It's got the little parrots on there. It's a very comfy shirt. Highly recommend it. But like, <laughs> I, I, I love me some bold colors. Not, not always that bold, I guess, but Hey, you know, we have to live with our fashion choices. We, have, we do. So no, yeah, no, all, all you awesome. guys look great up on stage. Oh yeah. I think, uh, what uh three of the, uh, two of the six people on stage or have seen us in person if not three of the six people on stage i think you know david mm -hmm. and uh, i think lucas down on the ends and then i think if uh, uh aquamorph, Chris, aquamorph yeah if he was paying attention he saw me in person because he was there <laughs> that year as well yeah the year before yeah well, i was i was curious if you guys would show up again yeah but yeah, that's a long drive from it. Oh, yeah, so sure. Not, from Cincinnati, it's it's further even, and plus all the mountains. That's crazy. Oh, but it was yeah. a neat experience, though. We yeah, seeing our uh our video up on the big screen and yeah, movie. that was that's great. It's a real fun experience. So it was cool. Oh yeah, meeting um David Pagano. That was you know. Yeah, I'd never met any brick farmers before that, so that was like wild. It was just like strange, I guess, to sort of be in that like but in that company of people who sort of knew the thing and i've met like several in person since like chris w and and you lucas mass like they, they were at my house for like a week it's it's really oh, wow. fun like just kind of like you know because like even just beyond like having this like same sort of hobby at one point it's just kind of like i don't know a lot of a lot of chill people a lot of a lot of cool chill people i might be mixing them up with someone uh lucas mass I, I, is there someone else named luke massey or something like that from sweden Oh, yeah, he's from Sweden. Yeah, Lucas Mass. Yeah, he he flew from Sweden and oh, okay. went so into it's the Swedish dude. Okay, yeah. yeah, it is the Swedish. Yeah, yeah. He's been, he's been in the community for quite Long a while. Time. Real, real yeah, good. quite a while. Yeah, he he and Chris and Rob made the winning fat entry the one year, the exquisite corpse. Yeah, he's he's a he's a longy. He's 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 a, he's a long boy. Yeah, so we we like that guy. We like that Swede. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah, yeah. He's been around for a while and a really uh, long time. Chris Wynn, uh, um did, it, did he run Brawl this year? Yes, yeah, he's been the Brawl head honcho for a couple, yeah, three. Head Loose was the first year he did it, uh, yeah, 2019. He's been, a, he's been doing a great job with he's, that. Uh, yeah, for, yeah, man. Yeah. From the start to the end, you know, uh, doing all the PR and all that kind of stuff for it and all the way down to the judging. He's done a great job with that. So yeah, I, yeah, I've been really happy that, like, he's been taking, like, you know, even a bigger and bigger role as just being, like, a big community guy like in the bricks motion form and the in the discord and stuff like that. He's like, he's a, he's a super chill, cool dude. And he, he, you know, he loves people and stuff like that. He's just really good at like being a, a good dude that like gets the word out. And I think gets people excited about just the community and the hobby and stuff like that. So, so yeah. good boy, good boy. Very good boy. Good for the <laughs> hobby. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, what's with your, your icon? Is that like a bird, the bird face? Yes, that is bird face. Yeah, I remember the first time I made that I was like 12. And I didn't really know like perspective, I guess. So like, it just looked like a T. It didn't really have the beak. And so at one point I redid it and like added sort of the beak there. <laughs> and so like, and people were like, well, that's bird face. I just thought that was like a thing, I guess. It's still I, I, I could see myself doing a revision of it at some point soon just to make it a little bit better. But like, that's, that served me real nice. Like, you know, even going like with my like non brick film films. It's just, all right. I, I really like that little thing. Bird face, like cool, cool icon. You've also made a couple of bird face, uh, yeah. videos, uh yes. I, separated uh, by a few years, maybe, maybe a, a new, um, a multi-plane, uh, bird faces uh, uh, potentially, uh, uh, out there. 
Um, it might might be so, might be so. Yeah, I I I love Birdface. I I definitely want to like come back to him soon so I can like confirm or deny nothing. I guess. Like, <laughs> I mean, especially like I mean, I, I guess the anniversary is coming up. Yeah, because it would have been June, July of 2011, I think, when I made that first one. And then, uh, so I guess I guess that is uh, my. Mm. When, when did I make Birdface Origins? Like 2014? Uh, like, Birdface or Origins was 2014. 2014, holy crap. Yeah. And, uh, so Birdface he, was 2011. Yeah, he's, so he's overdue. Oh my God, well, more time has passed since the... Oh, geez. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, lo- I love that character. I, I would love to like take, take him forward, even like, like, even like in... Um, like a puppet animation form, I guess. I don't know. Like I just, he just yeah. feels like my mascot, and I like I I wanna I, I'd love to just do do great things with him. And I, I honestly like him him and the and the goats I consider are my little mascots now. There and so I, I I hope I can make movies like like or even about them. I guess for for a good while. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. I have to ask just because our cat just walked into the room. Do you yeah. have any animals? Oh, not with me, but back at my at my my fam house in Cincinnati. Uh, Kirby and Henry are are, are are the two doggies right there. Ker- Kirby's like uh, she she's called a black mouth cur. She's like a, a like a brown dog with like this yeah basically a, a a black mouth I guess and stuff like that. And then Kirby's like a kind of like a pit bull I think lavish sort of mix and stuff. They are they're my world. I, I love those doggies. There's Aww. yeah no they're they're good ones. Yeah I. I I, I don't know. I couldn't really have a, a dog up in this apartment. You can, but I don't know. I, 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 I want to be able to have like a good big old backyard to throw the ball with. Cause that's what Kirby loves. She's, she's a ball hound. Like she doesn't give a crap about treats or about anything like that. Like, <laughs> but if you throw the, throw the ball, she will love you forever. Like she, Aww, that yeah. is so sweet. Yeah, so we she, got three dogs and two cats. But, yeah. There you know, you go. If my cat almost got on my lap this morning, and uh, I was like, no, no, don't let him get up there because if he gets on my lap, we're going to have to cancel the podcast. Yeah, yeah, there's I have nothing I can do. Like, I do not move. So I was like, yeah. nope, the cat has chosen me. I'm not going anywhere. Well, <laughs> that is how the day will go. Here I am and here I sit. <laughs> here I reap. Uh, I lo- yeah, I, lo- I love doggies. I love kitties too. My mom's got some big old, like, uh, like what do you call it? Long hairs and stuff like that at, at her place over in Washington, as well as some uh, two doggies too. One of them is like a three-legged sort of pit bull, which is great. I, I just love as many doggies as possible. That's awesome. Dogs are awesome. Cats yeah. are easy though. Yeah, exactly. That's a great thing too. Is like, okay, they just kind of do their thing. I, I appreciated that more as like, I get busy, <laughs> but dogs are great too. Cause they give you the support you need when times are tough. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Well, I'm sorry that we have to cut this short. But oh no! Yeah. Really appreciate you. Time has um, freaking flown. I'm like, holy crap! <laughs> wow, it's been an hour. Because it goes by so fast. It's like, gosh, we could have talked all day. Oh yeah. It does go by fast. But like, oh. you are so much fun, and your behind the scenes are awesome. Yeah, um, I love lots them. of great tips. Definitely watch behind the scenes. Um, mm-hmm. and looking forward to the new one definitely can't wait oh, to see sure. what you create oh, sure. next. and we got back in like a week too so hey we'll see what we can bang out for that oh good good i think i'm gonna pass on it this year but oh yeah no maybe i'll thought... do some voice acting or something yeah yeah not a bad yeah, way dave, dave is always up for uh, that he's it used to be like we were both kind of horrible now i'm just horrible and he's oh, like, no. gotten good because he does it so much now and I'm he enjoys it i'm like actor. i can't stand doing it just because i can't stand hearing my voice it's like it, I'm, I'm a terrible voice actor and even when rough. i think i'm doing oh, no come on no 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 i think i'm like i always cut out the really crap lines and then i just submit you know what i think is okay and, <laughs> I, and then i hear it in the video it's like what what was i thinking what the uh, hell that was horrible so no it's I hard. Just, just try not to do it at all We're it's hard all to be your own critic like, critics <laughs> but yeah. i don't really know no 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 but dave um, yeah he's cool with it so yeah your lungs and lines are short. If you give me a, <laughs> a bunch of lines, I, short I, I, not, and not much emotion. I start getting marbles in my mouth. But, you can nail that. But, but if it's a short line and you know, and no I'm emotion, not a thing is yes. all good. Give me a bullshit oh, sure. thing, yes, sir. <laughs> Something like that. We, we all like those lines, yeah. Cool. cool. All right. Well, so I want to wish you a um, yep, wishing you a safe, happy, and healthy New Year. And you guys as well. I, I Thank yeah. you. Thank and you. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing what you got coming up next. Oh, sure. All right. Thanks a lot, Ben. Appreciate it.
Yeah, absolutely. No, this is so so great being on here. Yeah, good good to finally talk to you guys. Yeah, good stuff. Sweet. All, All right. right. Have a good rest of the day and week. Yeah, you guys as well. Bye bye now. All right. Yeah. Bye bye now. Bye bye now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much to Ben for being such a fun and interesting guest. We wish it could have been longer. Please check out our sponsors and partners on the Brick Filmers Guild homepage. And don't forget to check out Ben's amazing YouTube channel. All of his social media links will be written in the description under the video. We want to give a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters. Spugastu, Something's Awry Productions, Frame 5 Studios, Mind Game Studios, Dark Dragon Films, Forest Fire 101, Spencer Katz, Paganimation, William Osborne, Sam Futhy, and the Tenacious Brick. You guys really inspire us to keep creating more of these in-depth conversations with the world's great brick filmers. If you would like to sponsor one of our podcasts, please contact me through one of our social media sites. The sponsors we have are always brick film related and are products that we use ourselves and highly recommend. We would like to thank Kevin McLeod for his wonderful music, which we use for our podcasts and in our brick films. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or YouTube, please like our rate, comment, and share on your social media. We'd really appreciate that. So, until next time, bye, y'all. Bye.